Hello and welcome to the weekly debriefing. This week we're talking about two similar tools uh, that basically do the same thing, they just do it a little bit different, and those are going to be Kahoot and Plickers. Both of these tools are considered interactive polling, um, basically allowing the teacher to interactively uh, interact with the students and teach via polling. So students would poll in their responses during the lesson and get instant feedback of whether they're right or wrong, um, and then the teacher can use that data to discuss with the class misconceptions that they're having, why they got that right, why they answered this, why they answered that. So it's a way for them to um, check the student's knowledge as well as to just kind of keep the um, activity moving and letting the students actually interact with the activity. Um, teachers also get individual data that can be used for uh, just general reporting to put in their permanent files um, for points or grades or things like that. So keep in mind with these types of activities, you're getting two different types of data. The first type of data you're getting is formative or in the moment data. So we're doing our Kahoot, um, the question pops up, my students answer it, they get a graph showing um, how many are correct or incorrect. So like in this image, what is inside the nucleus? Eight people answered three chromosomes. That was the correct answer. So I get some general data. Most people answered um, correctly. Two people answered incorrectly. One answered red, one answered uh, blue. I can say, why would you say red? Why would you say yellow? What is, why is that incorrect? So I'm able to get that initial in the moment data. Now, after the whole session is complete, I also get summative at the end data. And this is an Excel file that I'm able to download that actually gives the names of each student, um, how many points they earned, specifically what questions they answered correctly or incorrectly. So that's the stuff that I'm able to put in their permanent records. I'm able to look individually and say, okay, um, this student answered three out of the five questions correctly, while this one only answered one out of the five. So you have your formative in the moment data that you use just to kind of keep the conversation going um, and to use as reteachable moment, reteaching moments. And then you have your actual um, end of the end of the um, end of the lesson data that you use for more permanent information. Okay, so there, uh, these are the steps for making a Kahoot, and there's actually two different ways you can go about making a Kahoot. So first of all, um, you would make, a, as the teacher, you would make your Kahoot account. Um, there's also lots of Kahoots that you can already pick from. Um, there's like a database that other people have created, and you're able just to pick and use one of those. Um, but you would just make your Kahoot, um, and then you can choose to either play it live or play it as a challenge. So if you're familiar with Kahoot, you've probably are most familiar with the play it live version. This is where you, the teacher launches the Kahoot, the students join in, they go onto their devices and go to Kahoot.it, put in the pin code, join in with their name, and then now the teacher's ready to kind of walk through the session um, as the students answer the questions. So that's playing it live as a group. The other one is playing it as a challenge. In this case, the teacher still makes the Kahoot, but they assign it, uh, assign a deadline as the challenge. And then the students go into the Kahoot, they play it themselves one-on-one -on -one by themselves, and it records their answers, and then it gives the summative data that way. And it has a leaderboard so the students can kind of see where they are in the lead, but they're not playing it all as one big group. So those are two different ways to play um, Kahoot, play it live or play it as a challenge. When playing live, you see that graph data after each response. So I ask the question, everybody answers, I see how people answered, we talk about that, why did we answer this, why did, why did people answer this way, etc, cetera, etc, cetera. and then we move on to the next one. Um, with both live and the challenge, at the end you get this data Excel sheet that you can download that has results for each student with all that individual data that you would use for conferences, that you would use for um, reteaching, flexible grouping, um, if you were we're going to assign points or grades for it, that kind of thing. So Plickers is a very similar tool, but it does not require that the student have their own device. So um, with Kahoot, the teacher has their, uh, they're running the session from their projector, and then each student has their own device that they're pulling in via phone, laptop, really anything with internet access. With um, Plickers, they don't have to have their own device. They are using these cards, um, which you'll see, which you see on the screen here. Um, so the teacher creates a Plicker account online, and they create their Plicker game, very similar to how they would with a Kahoot. The teacher then downloads and issues out these Plicker cards. And if you notice on the Plicker card, on the corner, there is a number here. So like there's a number two. So I would assign Jane number two. I need to make sure that Jane always has number two Plicker card. 
Um, also notice that there are letters on each end of the plicker. So there's A, B, C, and D. So when it is time for um, so so when it is time to play the game, the 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 question um, displays on the screen. The student then holds up their card. So Jane would have number two card, and she would hold it up with the um, with the correct answer that she's wanting to submit facing at the top. So here she would be facing B. Now if she wanted to to choose A, she would rotate it to where A was, you know, at the top. So you would rotate it to however, um, whatever answer choice you want to, you, to show. So then the teacher has the Plickers app downloaded and they scan the room. They just hold their phone and with, with the Plicker app open and they scan the room and the scanner is picking up number two card is Jane and she's saying letter B. And so it records Jane as having answered letter B. So really the same thing that Kahoot is doing, it's just doing it with a non-technological device rather than the student actually pulling in. And then it gives you the same graph um, with how, how people answered each way. It gives you the same data because really all Plickers is concerned with is that Jane number two answered B. So all that information will come in. So this is a great alternative to um, Kahoot for people who are younger. So maybe they, you know, don't really know how to use the device yet. They're very young um, or they don't have the technology themselves. So now let's look at what this is um, looking like in your Google Classroom. So if you go to the Kahoot and Plickers um, link, or the, the area in, in the classwork area, you notice for Plickers that there isn't anything for you to do. There isn't an assignment for it. There is a video to show you exactly how to do it. And there is the Plickers website. Um, so you can come here and look, um, and you can make, create your account if you want to. Um, you can come here. This is where they'll also let you um, download the Plicker cards after you create your account. So you're welcome to um, look through this this is what it looks like when they um, scan in the results so you're welcome to play around with plickers but there isn't an assignment for it so with your Kahoot you do have an assignment um, notice it describes it here um, there is a video that you need to watch that shows you how to build a Kahoot and how to do it um, there's the link to actually going to Kahoot um, when you're there after you make your account you're welcome to look at different ones that other people have created I want you to make your own for this assignment but you're welcome to look at others uh, that people have created and then of course you want to look at the grading sheet to know what you're supposed to do and turn in so here you're going to to create a, a Kahoot as a teacher. You're going to create a Kahoot with at least 10 questions. It must be based upon a standard of some kind, um, reading, writing, math, science, any grade level, it's up to you. It must have at least 10 questions. And then I want you to turn it into a challenge, which is where students play in their own time. Then you want to give the challenge link and code to two other people. So you could do that to your, you know, children, your parents, your friends, your classmates, um, it doesn't matter. You can do it with your real class if you want to. Um, it doesn't matter, just two people. Um, and I would like for them to go and actually try out the challenge. And so you might give it to yourself and then go and try to do your own um, challenge and just see what that, is, that experience is like. And then as the teacher, I want you to log back in and review the data for those challenge in the reports tab. So you're going to be graded on whether or not your Kahoot has 10 questions, whether or not you have added in the standard and it, and it tells us the standard of what it's uh, related to, and whether or not you're able to look and view the reports after someone has done it. So what you need to submit here is you need to log into your Kahoot, choose uh, the Kahoot, share and copy the link, post that in the share link, and then um, you want to turn in the link to your um, to your challenge here and so this is what it would look like the link to your challenge and the link to the um, the standard that it goes with so that's what you're going to be submitting for your um, Kahoot and again you would do that right in the view question area um, and since these uh, since everyone's going to be submitting theirs as a discussion question you're actually welcome to uh, you'll be able to see classmates answers and you can actually just go and click on theirs and play different ones um, that you're interested in doing